Washington's teaching, um, partly it seems to me, dissembling slightly his, his superiority, is that what is to be celebrated is the Constitution, the Union, and the spirit of the people, um, and uh, would perhaps have been embarrassed uh, to think that what we are doing here is celebrating the great man rather than um, the republic that he helped found and served so well. Uh, and yet it seems to me um, necessary, at least I would put it as a question to the panelists, have we not lost something in um, uh, eliminating not only Washington's birthday but Lincoln's birthday um, and that kind of celebration of the great individuals. We celebrate the, the veterans who've given their lives or who've simply fought with Veterans Day and Memorial Day. We're in danger, in a way, of losing the celebration of these, uh, to those of us of a certain age, heroic uh, um, uh, exemplars of American leadership. Uh, is it compatible uh, with um, being an American to celebrate um, are great men, and is that in danger of leading to this kind of uh, self-congratulation that Steve, Steve Hayward sort of warns us of uh, in the office? Well, let me let me be a glass half full guy because I've been I've been giving a lot of talks on on the founders since I started writing about them, and uh, I am struck I am struck by the um, sort of basic goodwill that I find out there. And it's often uninstructed. Uh, I, I remember we, when we were filming a Washington documentary for PBS, we went to Newburgh, New York, which was his last headquarters during the Revolution, and that's where he faced down the officer corps, you know, that was really grumbling on the point of mutiny about not being paid and they were going to be sent home with an IOU and he really had to bring them back you know to their loyalty and it's one of the dramatic moments of his life and the house that he lived in is is now a little park and it's in the center of downtown Newburgh which is awful I mean it's just one of these upstate New York small cities it is grim it's just a grim grim downtown and we were getting vox pop we were interviewing you know passers-by and people who lived in the neighborhood and and one man said oh yes yes that house that's where George Washington signed the Declaration of Independence now you know he never signed the Declaration of Independence and if he had he wouldn't have done it in that house but this guy he knew there was a Washington connection and he was pleased with it and so I thought I'll take that I'll, no, but, but this is a serious point. I mean, I hate these conservatives. Oh, we're going down the toilet. Isn't it awful? You know, doom, doom, doom. I hate that. I'll work with that because he's got something there. So fine. So, so we can supply details. But I, but I do think, but I do think there is a reservoir of goodwill out there, and we have to work with it. Harvey. Um, yeah, uh, yes. Um, I think it's essential to begin from uh, the study of great individuals or even a kind of hero worship. I think that's essential even for scholarship. Our political science today is occupied with institutions, but you can't really know what an institution can do until you see the, or made a study and seen what the best representative or the best individual in that institution, in that office, did and was and what he was like. So political science should begin from the study of American history. I'm going to say this to uh, Ann Neal, and I, would, I, and, and I would say that also to my colleagues in uh, political science. Biography should be much more important than it is in our, uh, in our studies, in our collegiate studies, in our scientific studies, because science is about the best. It isn't only about the average, or the universal, or the boring, or the intermediate. It's about fine things, high things, noble things. That's great men. That's Washington, and that's Lincoln. 